Hello, hello. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the oil drama that's been going on the last couple of wars. I want it to be known right away that I am not picking any sides during this video. I'm here to update you all on the drama and just to give you the information that I have. Again, I'm not siding with any specific clans or groups. I'm just presenting what I know and the facts. I'm not super serious into the drama. I just wanted to keep casual players in the loop. During this video, I'll be explaining the issues around oil fields and the drama that goes with it. I'll be explaining the current system that clans use to claim oil fields and the problems with that system. I'll also talk about some possible solutions from players and devs and then some final thoughts about all of it. Industrial revolution with oil and facilities has been a disaster for foxhole players. One of the most valuable resources in the game is oil, which is used to power vehicles and weapons. Oil is found in various locations on the map and controlling these oil fields is crucial for any faction that wants to gain any edge in the battle. However, over the last couple wars, the oil fields are heavily contested and often become hotspots for intense civil wars. These civil wars are usually happening between large clans and small clans. Scarcity of the resources is bound to create conflict. You used to see it in comp fields. A long time ago, you used to see it in scrap fields, but now it's oil fields. The too long didn't watch the entire video explanation of this is bigger clans hoard the oil away from smaller clans, or at least that's what everyone is saying. I'm here to present the facts in a neutral way from both sides. Honestly, feel free in the comments to let me know if I wasn't being neutral. A majority of people in Foxhole believe that size, sheer manpower and specific time zones honestly of clans plays the most important part in who should run an oil field a lot of the conflict comes from big clans being worried that small clans won't keep up with a facility on the other side small clans are worried that big clans won't share any of the oil and keep them locked out of content but you might ask yourself what happens when you give a resource node to a small clan and some bigger clan disagrees with it and claims it by force are there any countermeasures for such occasions what if there are some small clans that just won't accept this all of those questions are what the drama kind of revolves around i kind of laugh at this situation because because before 1.0, if a clan or a regiment were trying to like claim a field for their own, everyone would just laugh at them. It actually made your clan and regiment look weak, and no one wanted to join those clans that claimed quote unquote node fields for themselves. But things have changed regarding oil fields. Right now, it's because of the fact that it's the only resource in the game that you have to build up to yield any other resource from it. You need a pretty dedicated group of players to operate it and upkeep the facility and eventually upgrade the unlocking of T2 and T3 facility techs. These days, a lot of us vet players look back with nostalgia to times when fighting over components was the most adverse aspect of logistics. With the introduction of the new 1.0 logistics system, I believe the oil-based fuels, oil, petrol, and heavy oil, which can be used to power up facilities, are the new resources bottleneck in the game. I know there's going to be a lot of people out there thinking, hey, what about coal? That's not what this video is about, unfortunately. This video is about the oil wars that go along with facilities. I know you can use coal to power up your facilities, but that's just not what we're talking about during this video. Demand for oil and oil-based fuels has multiplied, but the limits to getting this resource out have remained the same, and the demand for oil is not time or technology sensitive as it is with components and other resources. It's permanent, or it might even possibly rise with the war entering it into its later stages. When it comes to private and public public use of oil fields, most of the player base is always in favor of public, but of course we still have clans that try to hoard these resources. Oil fields are unfortunately limited and each can only have three wells. Even if the clans that were building the facility were to only focus on public supply, I doubt there's still enough to keep everyone satisfied. If you look into the drama I'm about to talk about, it might be said that one clan went back on their word about making the oil public for everyone to use. So we had betrayal in our own faction. How are we supposed to enforce that? And unfortunately, because they did go back on their word, it only hurts the entire faction and the war. The scarce resource of oil and its processing industry is being occupied and owned by big clans with big plans. It's understandable that these clans want to be able to go big and produce on a big scale. But by withholding oil from smaller groups or individuals and not making it public, they are effectively creating something of a class system for Logi players. You are either part of the big clan and the oil baron group, or you are the human pipe. This, in effect, is turning players against each other. At the beginning of a war, the clan with the most players will bring all of those players to the oil field, and throughout the last couple wars, we have seen literal fights between clans sh shooting one another for these oil fields. And yes, some of these oil fields do become public access stations later in the war, where eventually the smaller groups can fulfill their needs, but that's not what we're addressing today. I won't be calling out names or specific regiments either, because that's not the point here. 
The point is that it is an issue for both sides, not just one side, individual, or a regiment, or a faction. I would ask you in the comments of this video to try not to call out any specific clans or individuals, but just talk and discuss the issues at hand. <laughs> I know that probably won't work, but I thought I'd give it a try. I do believe that the devs had a vision for this, and these oil wars were not a part of their plan. I believe they thought a facility would be dedicated to refining or manufacturing a specific good, importing and exporting what they needed or didn't need. Oil refineries would export their fuels to material manufacturers who would export back to the oil refineries or to the vehicle factories. The vehicle factories would then provide other facilities with vehicles or send them to the front. A very complicated system, but one that mirrors the real world logistics if done right and could work properly. One of the biggest issues is that no one wants to be dependent on one another. Now to to talk about the specific drama that took place and to explain it the best that I can to casual players that may not know about the drama. In the game of Foxhole, the system on both sides relies on everyone to act in good faith, but in a persistent game that is constantly going on 24-7, that has language barriers and other issues, sometimes we both know that that won't go very well. So as I mentioned earlier, there are systems in place for both factions to claim these oil fields and they are run through Discord. I'm going to be talking about those systems once I cover this short drama story. Some of the questions you'll have to ask yourself throughout this drama is if a clan claims an oil spot on a discord channel does that count if a clan puts a map post on an oil field first does that count if the clan gets to the oil field first and starts building does that count lots of things to consider so for our story there was a player that completely ignored the system on discord and showed up to claim an oil field in force we are going to call them clan a i'm sorry if this gets a bit confusing not using names now we also have clan b who went through the discord system and got their application approved before the war started. Clan B of course thought that this was settled and that the oil field was theirs. Clan B then gets to the oil field a little bit later than Clan A and then a fight starts. When Clan B confronted Clan A about the system that the Foxhole players use on Discord, Clan A decided to double down and draw out the issue and create more drama. Clan A stood by their claim and eventually, with permission, attempted to clear Clan B folks away so that they could get the oil field up and running and producing the much needed material for the front line. I wasn't there and I'm not able to comment on who said what. Clan B thought they were in the right because they were following the system that was meant to prevent civil wars. Clan A was just trying to use its brute force to bully them out of it. So again, it's like the questions that I asked earlier, who is in the right here? Again, overall, I don't like the oil drama and I'm not here to take sides. I just want us to get along and enjoy the fun war game together. <laughs> One thing I'll note from reading all the stories on this drama is that I think it's more important to remember to blame the individuals that are kind of causing these situations rather than all of the clan members. Because some of the clan members might not know that this situation is even going on. From an outside perspective and, you know, my solo logy self, it seems like both sides show kind of clear signs of elitism. I think both sides maybe just need to take some time off. Maybe they need to be removed from these systems for a little while. It'd be nice to figure out some solution like that that wouldn't also harm the other members of their clans. So again, I'd like to know in the comments, should it be the players that get there first, the players that claim it on these Discord systems, or the players that post the map posts first? You know, who, who should get these oil fields? I personally think it's the clans that are putting in the most effort. Realistically, how do you put that into metrics that everyone can understand? We will talk about some possible solutions soon, but first I wanted to talk about these systems that the factions use for claiming these oil fields. Both factions have a similar method of organizing oil fields. Once the resource locations are noted, regiment leaders are given the opportunity to discuss what regiment is going to what field. From here, the regiments prepare to start the war and set up on their respective fields. One of the issues with this and what causes a lot of drama is we don't know where the resource nodes are until 15 minutes before the war starts. Oil fields need to be built as quickly as possible to get public petrol running. We might all hate to hear it, but larger clans do have the most manpower and thus workforce to do this as quickly as possible. So with the current system, when one war ends, you make a new application. Anyone can make this application and submit it to the faction Discord channel. The system administrators then attempt to create a ranked ordering of all the applicant groups. Now again, the question that I posed earlier, how are you supposed to create metrics that everyone can agree on? I think the answer right now for Foxhole is that you can't. But the metrics that they use for this application are public output, how will the facility be used to benefit the public? Second, how large is the group maintaining the facility? Will this facility be built and defended or abandoned within a week of the war? Or will the larger group with more people 
people will be able to take care of it longer. The last factor is past facility experience. So what facility leaders need to do is make sure they keep notes on past facilities so that they can show the positive outcomes that came with their facilities and their output. I know probably a lot of you casual players out there are like, why would you put in all of this work and essays and Excel sheets and papers and applications? Like, aren't we just playing fun war game? And I'm with you. I think it's all crazy too, but kind of this like crazy side of these, these intricacies and these things that kind of happen outside the game. It's, it's all pretty interesting, honestly. So after the applications are submitted, the administrators will look over the application and then either approve or deny it. From the people that I've talked to and the things that I've read, this system currently even though it may have a few flaws, has prevented multiple civil wars already. I've also been told that it has helped small groups not get bullied by larger ones. So with that, what do you think of this system? Is there a better way to implement it? Here's some of the issues that I found with the current system after talking with a few players and reading a few posts. Even though it has been stated that smaller groups have gotten oil fields before, the three criterias from the applications don't really show the same picture. If we're looking at two of the three traits, group size and seniority, it's hard not to think that this is biased towards veteran clans. It could be seen that this is a disadvantage for smaller clans and newer clans, which could essentially be locking others out of content unless they join said clan. But because the system is sort of a third party system and outside of the actual game, it's not really enforceable without breaking the code of conduct. Ultimately, you can really only encourage people to join the system and hope that they want to work together as a team. During the drama story that I explained, both sides participated in the system designed and one side just decided to ignore it. I can definitely see the arguments from the people in game that maybe don't even know about this discord system. These players are going to get to the oil fields and then just be what seems like bullied by another clan but that clan seems like that they have the right to that oil field because they participated in this discord system. I think this is where a lot of those drama stories come in and where both sides think that they're in the right. You have one clan that doesn't participate in this discord system that thinks they have a right because they got to the oil field first. And then of course you have the clan that participated in the discord system and got approved and then they think they're in the right so that they should get the oil field. So both clans are actually good, but they are both fighting over it for the wrong reasons. Honestly, if these types of stories were never brought up like on Reddit, I would never know anything about these Discord channels where you have to apply for an application to do oil. Of course, many new players won't know about this. Returning vets may not know about this. It's just a lot of background noise that a lot of players just don't pay attention to. They just want to play the game. And some people think that, you know, of course, those people shouldn't be penalized if they're wanting to, you know, build a base by the oil fields. But again, they weren't a part of that Discord channel, so they get bullied by another clan. And it's just all a little bit confusing and a little bit sad that that's how the drama is caused. We got to remember as well that the devs only give us this information 15 minutes prior to the war starting. Honestly, it's absolutely absurd and it needs to be changed. Why are we denied critical information just minutes before the war starts? Why do we have to do this sort of gold rush run every single time the war starts on the servers to get to the oil fields first just to be able to say we claimed it? By simply giving us the information sooner, the devs could solve a lot of these issues. Because ultimately, this isn't on clan man because this happened every war and on both sides. This is fully on the devs for forcing players into a situation that puts us at odds with one another instead of allowing us the time and tools to work together. Let's talk about some other possible solutions and the things that the devs could change. The goal here is to end the oil civil war that plagues both factions based on the devs poorly implemented communication system. I mean ultimately it is the responsibility of the game developers to ensure that their game is enjoyable for all players. Siege Camp should be promoting positive interactions among players and addressing any issues that arise within the game community in a timely and effective manner. Which is why a lot of players wish there was just a better way to handle oil fields right now. It's almost as if the way that oil fields are set up right now the devs wanted us to kind of fight over it or at least come to some sort of diplomatic solution. Communication is the name of the game in Foxhole. The side with the better communication is always going to win. Coordinating is an awesome way to improve your game experience, and I'm all for it. But the moment that you turn it into cliques and clans and regiments, it kind of becomes a problem. It certainly happens in all gaming communities, and the only way to solve it is to try and include a wider number of players. So of course, if you got down to like the numbers of oil fields, large groups refuse to share oil fields because it takes one or two oil wells to produce a sufficient supply of heavy and enriched oil. That's what powers these T3 facilities. Maybe in the Navy update, we can have some sort 
sort of offshore oil fields that produce one-to-one -one ratios from oil to heavy oil or something along those lines. Another idea in place, but would probably have to come from some sort of third system like Discord or something along those lines, is just to put smaller and newer regiments and merge them with bigger and more experienced regiments. That way the smaller groups can get some facility experience and start learning and eventually make their own facility one day. Another in-game solution that's already happening is that some clans do offer piping systems. All you have to do is just ask them. Obviously one of the downsides to piping is you never know if somebody else is going to branch off of your pipe and then it's going to slow to the flow reduction down. And one of the other issues with the pipe systems though is it takes a lot to maintain. I think maybe a better solution is maybe we make the oil fields bigger. Maybe you have some sort of component that creates more underground deposits where oil could be gathered. The oil fields would be big enough to fit a few facilities. Maybe you just have these in the back hexes. Maybe if you made them bigger, you would just have to tune down like the harvesting rates or something like that. What if we had little tiny fields scattered throughout the map that didn't actually show up on the map? It's just fields that you had to find and they showed up in random locations sometimes. Maybe they could only have one oil well at it. I think what most Foxhole players would agree on the most is that we need more in-game communication tools. It would be great great maybe if we could send each other mail maybe something where we could create our own list of which clans and regiments that we trust which individuals that we trust with facilities so that we could put them on some sort of facility list I think honestly, kind of like I talked about earlier, I think the devs envisioned us to share the facilities. I really don't think it was meant to be one clan build their own facility and kind of keep it to themselves. I think it was made to be more of a public place. So those were just like a bunch of random ideas that I thought about and some that I read on Reddit and other places. What are some solutions that you can think of? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you want to build off of any of the solutions that I talked about. So my final thoughts on this matter, the way I see it, this is going to continue to happen no matter what. The only ways that we're going to solve this is if we're able to be more inclusive and have the means to solve conflicts such as new communication tools or if the devs make a significant change to alter the current situation. At the end of the day, as much as someone might disagree with them or argue with another player about these decisions, it never justifies griefing or harassing them in game. The code of conduct still applies. I think right now no player made solution is going to make everyone happy. And as the game currently is, it's nearly impossible to implement a faction-wide solution. This game needs built-in features and mechanics that enforce cooperation. It does that in an amazing way when it comes to the big picture, but it lacks it in the system of small-scale interactions in my personal opinion. Maybe we should petition for resistance mode to be rebranded to oil civil war mode, where clans fight it out for oil plot rights in the upcoming war. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Again, I will remind you, no matter the drama, we should not not be team killing each other, griefing, or intentionally harming your team in any way. If the drama does not get solved that day, keep your cool and continue to think of a solution. You really have to remember that every player that plays in this game is a real human being. A lot of issues between groups of players can stem from simple miscommunication and sometimes even language barriers. Again, you might be a casual player thinking, why do I need to know about all of this stuff? And for many people, myself included, the politics of this game is kind of part of the content. If you take away a lot of the discussions that happen outside of the game and the organization, all you have left is a game about driving a truck around and shooting people, and there are a lot of other better games that do that much better. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, this type of drama needs to be solved, and we need new tools to help solve it. Because this type of drama is making players quit the game as well, and we don't want that. This is an issue that is bad for Collies and Wardens. This is something that we can come together as a player base and try and solve. I could start a real fight in my comment section and ask you guys, which faction do you think has it worse with oil drama? And man, I bet those comments would be good. <laughs> If I had to put my conspiracy tinfoil hat on, I would say overall, I do think it is designed like this for factions to overcome. It's the diplomatic skill check, if you will. As I mentioned earlier, the team that works together better has an advantage over the other team. A specific gun stat does not change the outcome of a war. There's a lot of little details in each war that drive the faction to victory. Wow, I feel like I covered a lot. 
I should have honestly made this video into different parts. And I'm sure I am leaving out some details, so feel free to let me know in the comments what I've left out about these oil wars. I hope for some of you I was able to catch you up to speed on what is going on with this oil war drama. As always, I appreciate your support, so please make sure to subscribe for more Foxhole content. I've been getting asked a lot more about a Discord, so I did open up a Discord. The link is below in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and cheers!